Aloha everyone, welcome back to another Space Weather Update. My name is Alexis, this is the Ascension Diaries where I track mine and your consciousness using the space weather tools available publicly for all of us. So let's get into today's video. So we have a sun diving object that I wanna show you first. We've had a, a few solar flares in the last little bit since I've done a video. I didn't do one yesterday, but we have a solar flare to report and it may have been because of this sun diving object. I wasn't able to line up the timing perfectly because this footage often uploads a little late. So it may have shown the explosion, but it hasn't uploaded yet. So later today, there might be a better vision. So keep following me on social media so you can see those updates. I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Telegram. These are ways you just get a little bit, little updates before or until I do another video, right? So let's look at this object. It's gonna come in the t bottom left here. It's not as big as the last comet. Okay, so this is a much smaller object, but there it goes. It was still visible and enters the sun at the beginning of the 24th, basically. So this is what usually starts the cascade of solar flares, I've noticed, is these sun diving objects seem to be a very much a part of this dance. And there's probably a lot more to it, but I'm not even interested in poking that bear right now. I'm just showing you what I see as basic as I can. The activity i'm going to show you in a quick second but here is the solar flare over the last like 24 hours let's click the 24 hour button since i have done a video in the last three days for sure so i missed yesterday look how quiet it was pretty chill and then boom today we got an m2.9 so i'm assuming since the 24th and you saw that object go in very decently early in the day and then midway through here is that M class. So in my opinion, that object and this flare likely are co corroborating a bit in that, but it doesn't bother me. I'm not trying to, you know, be upset or anything. I'm just trying to show you how to track. So when you see those objects go in, expect, expect a flare to come out pretty much in the same, I would say in, in the six to 12 hour region. It's pretty common. Just watching it, it's the patterns are showing. They're, the patterns are exposing themselves. Right, so let's get a little closer. This has happened within the last six hours that I'm recording this video. <clears throat> we have the M2.94. Excellent. So we had an X2.8. So that would have been up here on the 15th, or sorry, the 14th of December. So that was 10 days ago now was our giant solar flare. Now we had a much smaller one but still significant in comparison especially to the environment around it and the radiation levels around it it was decently significant so we had a solar flare activation boom it happened we had it last night there is some history i want to talk about and i'm just going to show you quickly the impact of where this flare hit so i'm just going to scroll down and make sure i know what i'm talking about i'm going to talk about all this stuff so don't even worry i'm not skipping anything important i'm going to get right to it i just want to make sure i'm on the right page okay so here is our flare so you can see that it's not as bright you don't see the flash you don't see that big star flash i'm assuming it's this area that's flashing us but it looks like actually there was they were trying to report that it was less powerful potentially and now they're giving it at a higher grade as well. So that happens sometimes. Sometimes they're not, some, I've noticed mostly they grade them down. They don't make them more strong when they uh, update the data or kind of follow up and make things official. But uh, here's the footage. It blasts right here. So I'll make this nice and big so you can see. So I'm assuming that comment went in and this came out. So again, not as big of a flash. You've seen, you've seen them on this channel. You see how big that this star or this X can get when that radiation just explodes basically. And it looks like it's kind of a double whammy as well. And it traveled a little bit, it dissipated the energy. So just beautiful. I love watching how they behave individually. So let's look at the sunspot group that's responsible for that. Whoops. Here we go. So here is the sunspot group that was responsible for that. That's the 3529. It's a massive sunspot group. They're also very far apart from each other. So I wonder if maybe that blast kind of helped tear apart the storm a little bit, but unexpected in my opinion for this to be the area that we actually got the, f the flash from. But I see there's a little bit going on here. It may not be giving us the honest, the true honest facts over here, but we're close enough. Obviously this, I should have checked this maybe like four hours ago and seen, seen that 
exact look at the time, but we get what we get. And <laughs> there was a few discoveries as well that, you know, was interesting. There is a sea henge outside of England that was on my Twitter today, really interesting. Also, um, the New York Times Square had did this uh, experience, I would say, which I believe was funded by the the Mormon Church or the LDS Church, and they basically took over all the screens and did some Christ, you know, normal kind of Chris, Christmas Day sort of lore on the screens, and everyone was, you know, affected by that. I would say that it was something that's never happened before. So Jesus sort of graced the big screens, and Mary and Joseph too of New York. I've already seen this. This was a few days ago, but perhaps they're, they've done it a couple times, but very interesting. Just, and they have it in all different languages, all the different languages of the places that, you know, the church has probably accessed <laughs> successfully. But uh, there was also a liftoff and a launch as well by SpaceX that happened after this flare or in that region of time, I would say, probably right after and they landed it, everything went well, and this was a mission actually for a German technology, which was interesting, called the S-A-R-A-H-2, the Sarah-2, and if you guys know, there is some lore about Jesus Christ's daughter actually being named Sarah, so that was interesting, but you can see here that OHB is the first listed space and technology group in Germany, so this was a German project, and in a way, Again, there is some relation to the lore of Jesus Christ in this particular launch, in my opinion, just from my understanding of things. So actually, maybe I will follow these guys. Just see what they're up to. So keep an eye on that if that's ringing your bell. Uh, like I said, where is uh, where is Santa right now? There was a... Here we go. So we have the opportunity now to discuss this phenomena that happens Again, in people, I would say more in the Anglo-Saxon, the Christian sort of sex of the world. But there's this understanding, of course, that you tell your children that this, this magical being called Santa Claus is flying through the air, delivering presents with flying reindeer in a sleigh. And he's going to break into your house, deliver you gifts, and leave eating your cookies and milk. And then each country has a little bit of a different lore. So I'm not even 100% sure what you maybe told your family about this. But then there is the infamous moment on the 24th where there's all these radar, these fake, I would say, and playful radar imaging of Santa Claus flying across the sky, visiting all the children as the time zones move, right? So right now, as we're recording this, in a way, <laughs> the children in the east side and across Australia are all going to sleep and preparing for Christmas to start or the December 25th to wake up and, you know, have a day with their family and open presents and, you know, experience in a way magic. But there is so, it's so cute how people with good hearts can make something bad still fun. And that's kind of the, in my opinion, what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to be watching this because as soon as it gets to midnight in Ireland and London and in that particular section, that was when the Irish airspace was declared as open was that time. So we're literally going to be watching Ireland at least opening their airspace for this particular being who technically doesn't exist. So that's a little bit something I'm on, I'm on alert about. Just a heads up. And it's funny too because shout out to those of you recommending I watch Space Weather News. And I am aware of this channel. I've been aware of it a long time before I even started videos. And it is interesting to kind of tap in and check on this on this particular perspective of things because they like to talk about other scientific papers that were that were released, I would say. So it's nice to see what papers have been released, I would say, in the public but kind of behind the doors are the more academic science journals and so on. But again, there was a mention to Australia in this particular article. So I, again, had to bring it up. Australia is just hitting it today. I think they're going to be the superstars for some reason of the energy of the next few days, I would say. So shout out to Australia. 
But basically, as he moves through, he's discussing all the stuff on the sun I basically just told you, so I don't need to repeat that section. But there is some articles here. The solar cycle is a distant line, distinct line of evidence constraining Earth's transient climate response, which is very interesting. But we're going to go to the Australian article. Aha. So the dis scientists discover lost ancient colony off of Australia's coast. So this is the north coast connecting Australia and I would say like Indonesia and so on together. And again, they're saying that this whole civilization drowned. But there is all these artifacts up here connecting in between these two land masses, which is super awesome. Makes total sense to me that this is the case. And I'm not trying to show you like anything controversial. It seems like a pretty open and shut case. Not too hard to fathom that there was land bridges between these areas and now it's flooded and there's artifacts like pretty much the coast of every single body that's currently above water is going to show you similar evidence i would say but it is interesting that this is what was coming up while i was also distinctly thinking about australia <clears throat> and then final note a similar thing was that i didn't know that the u.s actually bought alaska from russia so if you guys didn't know that that was something I learned in 1867. So very interesting little addition there. Yes, so the impact of our solar flare basically hit off of the west coast of Africa, west south, southwest coast of Africa. And so South Africa, again, is getting a ton of radiation. They are famously highly radiated area and likely is being activated during this time because it is sort of that crux, in my opinion, of our planetary electromagnetic field. So just from my understanding of how I've been observing, this makes sense that today this is the area that got hit with that flare. To me, that makes sense. It is kind of lining up with the logic for me. So my experience is my experience. You take what you can. We're looking at the trending today. It was a little bit odd. We uh, Maybe if we reload the page, the trending list will change. You guys can follow me on Twitter. Oh, also, there was a meditation at the Capitol building in Phoenix from a particular, I would say, I would say a inspiring character. And this person did a great job and I'm watching their progress, I would say, gently from where I'm at and my duties here. So we have XRP is trending again. So this has happened. The SEC is also trending. So that's also business and finance, which you can tell. Costco is number three trending. Not sure why. We've got, and then we've got sports. Troy at Duke. Everybody knows the legends of Troy. If you don't, definitely look into that. That's a synchro for today, for sure. Let's look at the charts really quick. So the top six. The birds are excited. The top six currencies that are being tracked are currently going up in price. So. That is interesting, very nice. So it is trending and it is going up. So that's very exciting. Here's some more evidence of that solar flare, very nice. So let's look at what else is missing from this article so far. What have I not told you? Okay, so the moon's almost gonna be full, you guys, and it's currently in Gemini. So. Parasites go crazy during the full moon. So if you're starting getting weird intrusive thoughts and blah, 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 it's a sign that your parasites are getting uppity. It's time to double down and eat the thing they want and then eat the anti-parasite thing and sandwich that in, shove that in there and kill off that population that's trying to lay more eggs and so on in your body during this time. It's also in the sign of Gemini. So again, there's going to be a lot of chatter. There's going to be a lot of chatter, chatter, chatter. And those parasites may be talking up a storm. They might be talking up a storm through your fellow family members at you as well. So if you're cooking dinner, perhaps for your family during this time, maybe just throw in a few more antiparasitic ingredients <laughs> and take out the sugar and, and as much as you can to try and kind of draw them out. Natural sugars are great, but there is a war in a way going on with the parasites during these full moons and again during this holiday season this is the time this is the time for this type of stuff so heads up like seriously big time it's time to start your parasite cleanse 
in a way. And again, there's also, I need to warn you, there's also going to be a lot of people driving on the roads that maybe have not gotten in a car since this time last year. You know what I'm talking about? We're talking about the population of people who maybe shouldn't be behind the wheel, but they, they chance it once in a while for to go visit family. That's what I'm talking about. So that group of people's on the road. They're going to be chatting, and so are their parasites. So I just want you to be aware of that. That's my maternal instinct kicking in, being like, hey, babies, protect yourselves from what's about to go down. In the news, Aurora Borealis or the sun isn't really hitting the news right now, which is fine. That episode of Aurora and so on has kind of moved out. We are now waiting for the new, which did just kind of come out of the sun. So let's look a little closer. Boop. That wasn't it, but that was the last one we did. Let's take a look at what spaceweather.com wants to say. Oh, they're telling us there's a there's a sunspot on the far side of the sun that's also very large and maybe causing some issues that we can't physically see. So just a heads up on that. The solar wind speed is hanging out at normal. Uh, record cold weather in the stratosphere. Okay, so the polar stratosphere clouds have suddenly exploded according to the Arctic stratosphere. It hit a 40 year record low for the month. So it also was causing these clouds was the coldness in a way which is cool, but also potentially a concern. So just a heads up on that with the temperatures. We'll see how next year does. Let's look at the storms right now and see how the earth is channeling in this water. There is a few disasters for sure that I have to go over. So before we do that, let's go back to my feed and go to those disasters really quick. So we have a tanker, again, South Africa, just like I said, they got hit with that solar flare and then boom, they had like a tanker explode on their one of their main highways. A Little bit of a drama there. And we had, again, solar flare hit and we're also talking about this earthquake in the Philippines. Now the Philippines has been shaking like crazy. So I'm actually surprised we don't see more footage of the Filipino people running out of buildings and you know, having problems. They haven't been showing, I would say, Americans as much as their footage from these earthquakes, but this is the first I've gotten to see in a little while of some real footage of some people being normal and experiencing an earthquake together. So that was yesterday that they had this earthquake. So this, I would say, would be potentially before that solar flare, but it could have been around the same time. Again, now we have some blizzard warnings, which we're going to now go into the bigger map of this precipitation that's coming down also malaysia if it's not on here is also flooding here we go malaysia is flooding pretty bad as well obviously everybody's helping each other out they're used to water over there but again it sucks you know that's a lot of water to deal with and we just want to give them lots of love from our our planetary vibe over here we're just taking care of everybody so let's look at the rain what's coming so all the way north to south there is this giant storm along I would say a, this is a ley line <laughs> potential here. So there's something going on connecting these these points. So this energy is going to be sweeping, I'm assuming, to the east. But it could be going west, but usually it goes east. And it's going to be activating, I would say, all of what's hanging out over here, all of these ley lines. So shout out Atlanta. It's coming. But right now of course this is our superstar this is where so much energy is pulled through in our part of the world so just watch for that this is just watch the the energy can't lie and the water and the plasma all shows up where that those ley lines are and where that energy is running so either artificially or uh, naturally so just watch when you start seeing water dumping and lightning something's grounding by you check it out so let's look you know, we got a little over by Seattle, nothing crazy. A little more precipitation here in South America. Very nice. Nothing nothing too crazy, but again, yeah, literally over by Ascension Paraguay, there is some there is something going on over here and over by Buenos Aires. Argentina. But yeah, heads up on Brazil. South America in general just heads up I'm that's all I have to say intuitively it's like I'm getting messages as I'm watching this just like oh watch out for this watch out for that here we go there's some storming over here I was watching out for this particular area for open air space okay so we're watching over here for open air space 
We've got some storming over here. There's some storming north of this area. All right, just keeping an eye. Where is our Malaysian, Indonesian friends over here? Very nice, we've got some major storms going on over here and actually Australia is getting a ton and so is New Zealand getting a ton of precipitation as well. And they're all sleeping and preparing right now <laughs> for quite a day tomorrow. So let's look at the electromagnetic field around the whole earth. Italy is showing us that I would say that the 20th is was decently strong. 21st a little less, 22nd got stronger, 23rd decent amount as well, 24th things are dissipating. So I would say that anxiety that we feel, that anxiousness is dissipating today, potentially a little bit, and the solar wind's down, so I'm going to say anxiety levels are going to be going down today, which is good. Deep rest, deep rest, because the, the whole rat race is about to go crazy tomorrow and have their own little catalytic experience with your all the bloodlines and family lines and like it's like you're going home for the census if you're you're going home for the census you're going home for your religious rights over here they're they're watching that they're watching the movement of all y'all and your energy too and look at this in russia there is some evidence of again some s intense I would say interference potentially in some electromagnetic experimentation going on, especially with these very interesting vertical lines over here. I've never quite seen them behave like this. And I know that's specific, but again, I'm always looking for weird stuff that I've never seen. And this little section right here, that's a little odd. Not seen them do that before. This is very strange as well, of course, but I've noticed them doing these horizontal lines more. Obviously very horizontal right here. This is the earth resonance would have been right here. So you can see they were blasting the second earth resonance area a little bit harder, which is strange. But that was that was on the 23rd. So we're in the 24th. Things are calming down slightly, but it looks like maybe it's being done mechanically, if that helps. Does it matter? Not always, in my opinion. I think the science is quite advanced, and just observing it is actually just teaching me something instead of me having to go to this university and figure out what it is they're actually doing and looking for. Because if I wanted to know, I'd ask them. I'm sure. I know what I'm looking for. So we have a big earthquake over in Washington. So here we go. We've got West Coast. This just happened. So West Coast USA is shaking over by Washington. This little crux point over here. Interesting. So what's the global consciousness doing? Oh, we were a little conscious. Then we got unconscious. And now we are trying to go conscious again. But it's struggling. Yeah, it's struggling. So again, people don't really know what to do with themselves on these days off, I would notice as well. So this is kind of what looks like confusion to me. <laughs> That's like some confusion. Like, what do we really do with our time today? Maybe study space weather a little bit. I don't know. It's up to you. What do you want to get smarter in? It has nothing to do with anything else in your life. Something random. Solar wind speeds, I'm just looking... I'm just perusing right now to see if there's anything else I need to alert you about. Ooh, I didn't set this up for y'all, so this is a good example of how I do it. Boop. Ta-da. Boop. Ta-da. Look at that beauty. They don't make them big enough, in my opinion, but let's make them a little bigger. The birds are very excited to exist today. Very happy bird day. They're going to have a wonderful day. I can just tell. They're just happy as heck. So the birds are in a good mood. <laughs> These are good. So I think it's because the energies are pretty decent. Ah, yes. Doo -doo. Let's see what else. Let's see. Did HeartMath get their stuff back? No. Any earthquakes we have to be concerned about that I didn't mention yet? Oh, wow. So, yeah, you can see there's planetary-wide shaking going on today over by, I would say, well, the Philippines. Yeah, I would say. So, yeah, that Filipino earthquake, I think, was kind of showing up everywhere. You can see a little bit residualness all over the place. Isn't that beautiful? I love our planet. It's so cool. I love how this energy can travel and be picked up all over the place, which to me is awesome. Very interesting. As a child, I never 
conceptualize it that way. So it's so cool to get the evidence now. So we are, um, we are at the end of this video. If you'd like to go to my website, put your email in there so I can get a hold of you if there is anything extreme going on. For example, when there is an X2 solar flare or something like that, I can quickly email everybody. It's free to sign up for that. Good emergency email list. Everybody with a business, I'd highly recommend you encourage people to give, your, give you their emails. It's excellent business practice and also because of all the censorship and the potential chaos that's going to happen next year. We don't know quite whose opinion or what's going to get censored. So we just keep track of each other because the sun can't really censor that even though they desperately try to. <laughs> and I think that's literally just one of the main themes of Earth. <laughs> So thank you again for coming to my video today. Please join my Patreon or my Telegram if you're already signed up for this email. And I will be seeing you on the next video. So much love. Talk to you soon. Beep, bubble, beep.